Okay, today I'd like to talk to you guys about parts of a good graph. And whenever you're making a graph from data that you collected, you want to make sure that your graph has both an X and Y axis. And on each axis, you want to make sure you have the name and the unit. And the name and the unit. So in this case, we did time in seconds, distance in meters. The thing on the X axis is the thing that you control. This is called your independent variable. The thing on the y-axis is the dependent variable. Okay, in addition to labels on the axes, you want to make sure you scale your axis. So in the, this case, I scaled by ones. On the y-axis, I scaled by tens. The scale on the x and the scale on the y don't have to match. But once you establish your scale, you've got to keep that scale going for the entire graph. You plot your points, you make sure that you have your title, a descriptive title, and the rule is it's the Y versus the X. So in this case, it's distance versus time for a moving car. After you plot your points, realize that your points will never be perfect, so you draw in your best line. Don't try to hit every point, but try to draw in a smooth curve or a nice straight line, depending on your graph type. These are the parts of a good graph. Labels for each axis, units for each axis, a scale for each axis, a descriptive title, data points, and then a smooth line that best fits your points. Okay, I want to go through with you guys the five different graph types that you might run across throughout the course of the year. There may be others, but these are the five most common. They are linear graphs, inverse graphs, no relationship graphs, squared graphs, and square root graphs. Here's how you're going to be able to identify them. A linear graph goes up at a constant rate. So you can see it climbs in equal increments the entire time. The slope of this graph stays constant. So this graph is telling me that my money earned versus my time worked goes up in a linear fashion. If I double the amount of time I work, I double the amount of money that I earn. This graph down here also goes up, but it goes up at an increasingly steep rate. So the slope starts out gradual and becomes steeper as I go along. This is known as a squared graph. This is telling me as I fall in free fall, the more time I'm falling, the greater the distance I cover. If I double the amount of time that I'm falling, I will cover four times as much ground. This is a squared graph. This is a square root graph. This one also goes up as I move to the right, but this one goes up very steeply at the beginning and more gradually as time goes on. This is known as a square root graph. Okay, this graph shows the uh, values going down as I move to the right. So, for instance, as I travel at higher speeds, it takes me less time to complete a trip. This is an inverse graph. If I double my speed, I cut my time in half, and that's the key to an inverse graph. You double your x, your y gets cut in half. Okay, the final type of graph is an, a no relationship graph. And that means that the x variable has no effect on the y variable. So in this case, it doesn't matter how many particles of gas I have, the temperature of the gas is still going to be the same thing. So uh, number of particles does not affect temperature. So you can see that the value stays about the same the entire time.